stuck on the zero countdown screen there for a second. I wasn't sure how to uh, make my way through you. Hi, Dustin. Okay, the comments are working, which is nice. That's always my biggest concern. Hey, David, Dahlia, Tiffany, Kelly. Okay, hey, everyone. I hope you're all well. Um, I mean, beautiful evenings or morning for those of you in Australia. And so, yeah, I'm very excited about today's show. It's been a long time since we've done a live call, and I miss it because I love the interaction with you. So make sure you say hi in the comments. I'll come and uh, read the comments from time to time. I'll try not to be too distracted, but I will come because this is one of these topics that we can really learn from each other about. So this is time management, right? Something we all deal with, something um, that's always a struggle. And, you know, sometimes you might be feeling really good about it. At other times, you might be feeling like your life is a hot mess and there's not enough times in the day. And I go through those phases as well. So I'm not here going, I have the answers to everything and everything will be sorted by the end of this video. But what I'm hoping is that by sharing my system and what I've been using, what's been working best for me, see how I say best, not working all the time, but best. Um, I'm hoping that you will be able to either steal all those strategies or if you're thinking, oh, that wouldn't really work for me, but this was a good point, then that's good too, even if you get just one thing from it. So um, I'm hoping that it will be, um, it will be helpful in, in that way. And so what I'd really like is for you to share as well in the comments as we're going through it, if you've got ideas, if there's things that you've tried and it didn't work or opposite, that's probably the most important things that you've tried and that all working for you, please feel free to share in the comments below because it can help someone else. Um, also, I have some notes here so that um, I don't forget to say anything. Um, oh, old school am I? I'm actually printed my notes rather than having it on the screen, which is wonderful. Um, okay, yes, two things I wanted to say. Uh, first is you do not need anything else than your own uh, planner, like your favorite journal, diary, uh, weekly spread, whatever it is that you're using at the moment. If you've got one that you really like, you don't need anything else than that really, or even just an empty notebook or a piece of paper. Uh, I'm going to be using um, uh, screenshots of the planner that I made, which is the Maker's Roadmap right here, but that does not mean that you need to have this one to uh, make it work for you. Just wanted to be clear on that because you'll see picture on the screen and I don't want you to feel like, well, I don't have this planner, so it won't work for me. It's really, I'll give you tips on how to make it work for your uh, specific situation as well. Um, Yes, and I think that's it for the introduction. <laughs> Let's get started. Okay, um, I'm getting a lot of beep, beep, beep every time I get a comment, so I'm hoping you guys aren't um, hearing that, and I'm gonna try to see if I can mute this. Uh, of course, I don't know how to, because this is the first time I use this for the comments. So yeah, no, that's, I just don't know how to do it. So I hope you, can, you guys can't hear it too, too much. Um, oh, damn it, what have I done? Okay. Back to chat, okay, cool. From Los Angeles, Stella, Kate, Tasha, Caitlin, Katie, Kiva, Okaiva, Kiva, Kiva, Tasha, Stephanie, hello everyone, we've got Belgium from Montreal. I was there not too long ago, Steph. Um, Ace Key O Enterprise, which I'm guessing is not your first name, but I don't have your first name. Um, Casey, Laura, D, Rosie, Coney, lots of people today. Okay, so let's dive in um, with there's really seven steps I'm gonna, I can't do numbers on screen, what is my problem? I always do eight when I try to say seven. Seven <laughs> steps. And so the first one is quite simple and it's simply picking a day of the week where each week you're committing to actually planning for the week ahead. Now, I'm gonna be a little bit flexible with that because I know from trying to do that myself each week that it doesn't always happen like this. So I like to have a plan A and a plan B. Usually I tell myself Friday evening, Friday night, whenever it is that I stop working for the week, I plan for the next week. But sometimes I don't have time because I have to rush for dinner or groceries or whatever and I'm just happy to be done working so the last thing I wanna do is think about my next week. So sometimes I'll do it on Sunday night and that's fine. Sometimes I also work over the weekends and that's fine, I'll do it on Sunday night then. But I force myself to either Friday or Sunday night, write down and it takes literally five minutes what I'm gonna work you through today, walk you through today. So it's not a long process, um, but you do wanna have a fresh kind of mind um, and to, to do that. So I'd love for you to actually make a comment right now and let me know in the comment when are you going to do it. It doesn't matter if it's Monday, Tuesday, Friday or Saturday, 
if for some reason you always take uh, you know Thursdays and Fridays off that's when your weekend is depending on your situation then that's cool then maybe you do it on Wednesday night I don't really mind when you do it as long as you commit to doing it once a week and picking a day right now so mine is Friday as I was saying sometimes I do it Sunday night it's better when I do it Friday because then during the weekend I'm not stressing with stuff on my head you know on my mind wondering oh my god should I should I be enjoying myself this weekend and relaxing or should I maybe more be working because I've actually planned my week ahead I know that it'll be fine everything is sorted and I can actually just relax during the weekend so that's that's the benefit of doing it before Sunday night um, Steph is saying Sunday night let me scroll down on those messages Sunday Saturday I usually have Saturday evenings open Sunday is best day for me as well um, Kelly says I work seven days a week, but I probably should cut back. Yes, I would recommend one day off. There's a point where I, I was doing that too, and I'm, what am I saying? A couple of months ago, I was working seven days a week as well. It happens. Sometimes we just have to, uh, but it's never, it, it can't be a long-term thing, Kelly. I, I would definitely recommend you at least take one day off. Um, what do we have here? Friday, Sunday, my day is Tuesday. I commit to Friday. I love that it's Tuesday. I love people that start their day week at a different time than everyone else. I don't know. I think it's 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 kind of fun. Sunday evening because of shows uh, on weekends. Sunday, Sunday is my planning day. Okay, so everyone is more of a Sunday. Monday morning is for planning. Something that's nice about Sunday as well is that it will it helps you get a bit less stressed about your week because. We all know how we feel on Sunday nights going to bed. It's like, oh, great, tomorrow is Monday and I've got all this stuff and I don't even know what I'm going to do tomorrow when I wake up because I've got all these stuff to deal with and then it's all those thoughts that like eat out our brain. Um, so doing it on Sunday night is nice for that too because you, you wake up and you're thinking, okay, I actually have a plan. Like I don't need to stress about Monday. I know what I have to do. And so it's all sorted for me. Misty, hello. Uh, Friday is tend to be my heaviest day for planning. That's good. Well, I mean, yeah, not the heaviest day for planning, but that you know what day that is for you. It has been Sunday, but I feel rushed. Maybe you should try Friday, Kiva. Okay, so great guys. So we've got step one. That was pretty easy. Now let's get into uh, into one level deeper. What do we actually do on, for most of you, Sunday? The weekly review. Now, I hate reviews that take so long because... I've, I have tried it, um, and let me know if you've tried that in the past too, you know, writing a few pages of how the week, like, I don't have time for it. And realistically, if I need to commit to something that I'm going to do every week, it needs to be quick and it needs to be efficient. So what I do is literally I use four boxes, so I'll show you now, um, where is it? So that's a screenshot of the, the Maker's Room app I was telling you about, but what you can do is either just a white piece of paper and you can do it on that. Or if on your specific, the journal, the diary that you're using, there's usually a notes section or a few pages of notes, you can just draw it on that. And you literally just need to put a cross so that you've got four boxes. And I always start with what worked and what didn't work. And so that's not necessarily what I've done versus what I haven't done because that's too easy. We can all look at a to-do list from the week before and go, oh, I haven't done that. Let me move it to the new week. But that doesn't really help you because the question you want to be asking yourself here is more, why did I get those things done and not these ones? So what worked is maybe that instead of picking up your daughter after uh, swimming lessons on Wednesday, your husband's been doing that and you've been dropping her on Friday instead or whatever. You've, you, something you've changed has worked better for you, has given you that extra hour that you needed to finish this or what has worked and what's been more productive in helping you moving forward that week. And on the reverse of that, what didn't work? And that could be that you've completely um, underestimated how long this task was going to take. Write it down because you're learning from that. You're learning that next time you need to take product for your uh, photo for your products, maybe you should write four hours down instead of one hour because it actually takes a lot of time. So all these things is what I'm talking about. Not necessarily um, what you've done and what you haven't done, but what worked and what didn't work and what got in the way. And that brings me to the two boxes next to that, which is next week go and next week stop. So what am I going to be focusing on next week and what am I going to stop doing next week? So there's maybe a project that you know is distracting you, maybe um, something you've started learning about that you really shouldn't be focusing on right now but you know it's been taking all of your attention last week. Like there was this amazing webinar on Instagram 
And so suddenly all you've been doing last week is looking into that when really what you should have been doing is finishing up this product photography project that you had. So this is when you sort of more look into, okay, what, where did I go into tangents and, and how do I refocus next week? So it's super quick. Don't make it a big, like, few pages. Or if you want to, then definitely do that. If you're into writing and you want to do a full journal, do that. But my system is really just, like, two lines, four boxes, and a few points, like, bullet points. I just force myself into thinking about, okay, what, um, what went well and what didn't go so well. Um, Kate says, I need to stop projects. That's a great idea. Yes, you need to. You need to say no to things. And we'll talk about that a bit more when we actually plan the week with a weekly spread. But you cannot say yes to everything. You cannot take any projects on board or stuff is not going to get done. And then you lose your priorities when you do that. So we need to, you know, stop looking at those squirrels through the window or those shiny objects on the floor that we want to pick up. All of this needs to go. Um, hi, Heather. Um... Hi, Alyssa. Laura, hello. Laura Madison. I can see you, girl. Um, that is such a good idea, writing down what takes longer. I repeat, that hopes too much. Yes, uh, because, uh, and we'll, again, this is one of the steps I'm about to cover, um, but being becoming better at evaluating how long a task takes is massive. Like when you're able to look at a project list or to-do list and go, this is going to take me two hours, this is going to take me 30 minutes, and it's accurate, this is when you become really predictive because you can easily fit in your week. And that takes practice. Like that's not going to be a, you know, if it's something that you do for the first time, of course you're going to be a little bit off in your estimate at first. But that's why every week you try to like learn from, from those mistakes. So, that's your weekly review, super quick. Don't make a mega deal out of it if you don't have time. If you do though, and if you would actually like to take that into more of a journaling part and actually sort of like, I don't know, write pages of a journal, gratitude journal or whatever you wanna do, then do that. It's, not, it's just not my thing, but again, make it work for you. Now, step number three is project focus. So what we're doing here is trying to remind ourselves what is my focus on and where should it be or where does it need to be? So this is something I'm not going to get into too much details about because next week, actually, oh, is it next week? I believe it is. Yes. Next week, I have my full system, not just the weekly time management thing, but the yearly plan, yearly, quarterly, monthly. I'll send you this information. If you sign up for my newsletter, you'll receive it next Tuesday or I break down really I'll organize my entire week, my entire month and all that. So this is going a little bit deeper and you can learn about that next week. But the step three is really going, okay, I know what my focus is for this quarter, for example, and what my projects are that I need done. And so let's focus back on that. And what do I need to get done this week so that I can accomplish those bigger projects? So uh, let me show you again. So my face is going to disappear, but I'm still here, guys. Um, just behind the weekly spread. So this is again um, from inside the Maker's Roadmap Planner. Hey Judy, um, hey Pam. But again, use whatever diary journal thing system you're happy with. If you've got one you already love, then that's perfect, I don't mind. Here you will see on uh, the right, inside of the Maker's Roadmap Planner, there's an actual section for it, which is the project I'm working on, and then three columns to help you prioritize those. So to help you go, okay, this is my number one project, this is the thing I need to be focusing on most importantly, second, third, etc. So maybe your first one is something like email marketing, like you're setting up your email list for the first time and that's something you really wanna get done. Maybe your second one is work on, the, on this new production, uh, on this new product line, sorry, that you want to release in a few months from now. And these are your two projects at the moment that you want to get done this month or this quarter. So remind yourself of this every week so that you stop being, uh, you know, drawn towards that squirrel again or that shiny object or, you know, so that you're not distracted by all the other things that might come your way. So... I do that in this part of the planner because there's a section for this in this planner, but if you don't have the Maker's Roadmap Planner, then you can use the notes section on your weekly spread. Usually, most journals will have a note section, and you can simply do that in this. 
or just literally put a sticky uh, a sticky note on top of your weekly spread with your project focus in mind. So make it work for you. Um, this is how it works in my system, but make it work for you. So um, this is quite simple. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense. I'm just going to come back on the screen here. Hi. Um, just to make sure that there is no questions in the comments. Kelly says it would be nice to see a sample of what your list looks like. Yes. Oh God. Yes. The overwhelm is real in my list. My hardest is balancing the two businesses. Um, I use Google Calendar and sticky notes on my desktop computer. Okay, see, well, that wouldn't work for me necessarily, but if it works for you, then that's fine. As long as you don't end up with like 15 or 20 sticky notes to a point where you don't know in which order to do what. So really what I'm saying is you should have a weekly spread because that's what we're going to get into. It's really blocking those times to decide when do I do what exactly. Um, and when on when you're looking at that weekly spread, there should be a note or a part of that those pages where you, your focus is written down. And every week you write it down. This is what I'm focusing on: email marketing, new product line. In my example, so that you know really um, what you sh where your sh focus should be. Um, Laetitia is asking, "What planner is that?" That's uh, the Maker's Planner Roadmap. If you want to learn more, the link is just below my little fingers there. Tizico slash roadmap, and you can learn more if you want. Um, okay, and step four, you guys. Step four is what I call the non-negotiable. So these are stuff that you cannot move in your week. So we're all going to have different situations here. I'm not full-time in my business. This wasn't the case. I used to have up to three different jobs. Well, that's in hospitality. Then I was working on my business on the side. So that was four, really. Some of you are going to have kids. Some of you are going to work part-time. We're all going to have a very different set of, let's say, um, things that we have to work around. And that's where it becomes overwhelming because we think, well, I literally don't have enough time to work on my business. Where do I find this time? How do I fit my to-do list in between all these things I have to do? And there's stuff that you can negotiate, as in there's stuff that you can say no to, as we were saying just before. Others, you can't, you know, like your kids still need to go to school. If you have a part-time job or a full-time job, well, you need to show up in the morning and do your job. So these are things that you can't move. And so this is where you start when you plan your week. So let me go back to that slide. And so here we were. And so where you start, and in this example, I think I've taken the example of someone that'd be working part-time because I, I thought that was a happy medium between all of the different situations. Um, but maybe you are working Monday, uh, Wednesday, and Friday. Whoops, sorry. And Friday. So these are your work days. There's no way you're going to, you know, try to feed in anything while you're at work. Or at least I hope that when you're at work, you're at work and you're not really working on something else. Although I won't tell if that's the case. That's okay, guys. I've done that before too. Um, <laughs> but really, these are times where you shouldn't be planning on working on your shop. These are times where you're at work. You can't do anything about that. There's a bit of travel time, I'm sure, around that as well that you have to take into account. So I would start by blocking this off my weekly spread so that that's it. Like I can't negotiate that. That needs to happen. Around that, there's other things that might be happening. Like maybe going to the gym is a non-negotiable. And I would recommend that's a non-negotiable, whether that's the gym or yoga or whatever you do to look after yourself, read a book, go for a walk. I would recommend at least once a week. That's entirely up to you. But if it's something that you've committed yourself to and you, you decided it was important for your physical and mental health, you have to look after yourself, put it into the non-negotiable category and write it down as a first thing on your weekly spread before even looking at your to-do list. This is a time where I cannot work. And of course, there's going to be meetings and appointments and any other things like that that you might have during your week. So for this example, I've taken a doctor appointment, which, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just an example. It could be anything else. It could be dentist. It could be picking up the kids somewhere. It could be anything that you really can't move. So these are my non-negotiable in this case. So this is how I start every week. My planning session for the next is, okay, what do I have to do that I can't get around, you know, get away with not doing? <laughs> so these are uh, those. Let me go back on screen. I'm back here. Um, 
Hi Beth, Beth is late, it's okay, you can watch the replay if you've missed the beginning guys and same thing if you need to go, the replay will be available as soon as we finish with the live so you can always watch it later. Um, oh, I'm seeing some great tips in the comments as well, people sharing what they're using, the Promototo apps, well, I haven't actually tried that but I heard a lot of people that said it works really well for them. Aisha is saying will there be a replay, um, absolutely, you can sign off. It will be available on YouTube, on the Facebook uh, page as soon as it ends, and on the blog as well in as little as 24-ish uh, hours. So no problem if you have to go. So this was the non-negotiable. I hope this makes sense. Uh, I think up until this point, everything is pretty straightforward. These are the things you can't get away with not doing, so we have to put them down first. Uh, Laura says, is there anyone waiting on you for them to do their job? That's number one. Then whatever will moves you towards sales, then what you like to do. That's how I do it on a good week. Yeah, that's a good system. That's quite close to what we're doing here actually as well. So that, that thing of is there anyone waiting on you for them to do their job is kind of like a non-negotiable, like commitment that you really you have to do then. Okay, step number five is nothing else matters. And every time I say that, I think about this Metallica song and it then gets stuck in my head for um, over a week. So you're welcome if I just did that to you and now you're singing, singing in your head um, this song. Anyway, nothing else matters is really, really, really important. Um, and Laura, the steps will be on the blog after the video. So it will be all written down as well if you're more of a reader. So absolutely. Um, Nothing else matter is a concept that I really want you to pay attention to because it's very important. There's things in your business that you can do with less, you need less focus, let's say, than others. So Etsy conversation, emails, uh, social media comments. These are things that you can pick up and leave. So you can, you know, work 10 minutes on it, then go and pick up the kids, come back, finish it. Or you could be even just queuing somewhere at the grocery store and do that very quickly. But then there's other projects where you really need to be focused for a few hours straight in order to first be productive, efficient, do good quality work and actually get it done. So these are things like batching your product photography, of course product collection, uh, anything that's going to require a little bit more strategy, thinking and deep dive into your business, maybe your marketing plan, things like that. You're not going to be able to do it in 10 minutes here, 10 minutes here, and 10 minutes here. Because every time you come back and you only have 10 minutes to work, that's barely enough time for your mind to go back into deep work mode. So that nothing else matters thing is a time slot that every week you um, allocate to your shop, to your business, and that's that becomes a non-negotiable. So although in practice it could be negotiable because no one is waiting for you anywhere, it goes in your weekly spread as something that you can't move and if anyone asks you a favor or anything happens to be during that time, you can't, you're busy working. Because no one, if you were working in an office somewhere, no one would actually ask you if you can do X or Y in the middle of your work hours. And so the concept of this is to go, even if it's just for two hours, is to go, this is a block of time that is non-negotiable where I get to do deep work on my shop and on my business. I might require you to have a conversation with your family to say, when I close the door, this is, you know, my time to work on this. You're, you're going to need to take over dinner tonight because this is my time. Maybe it's Saturday morning for you. Maybe it's going to be Thursday evening. Whenever it works for you, block that time and make it like it has to become a non-negotiable. What I'd like to recommend is minimum two hours for this. The longer, the better but minimum two hours so that you can get into that flow and into that deep work zone, if that makes sense. So uh, if I go back to the slides, whoops, it's already on there. Okay, so this is where we were. And the nothing else matter time slot in this example, I've put uh, four hours on Thursday morning. It could be on Tuesday, it could be on Saturday, it could be whenever it's best if it's the same every week so that you really get into that routine. If it has to change from time to time, well, so be it. But really try to to make it a routine, so to make it stick. So this becomes really something that people have to work around. Exactly like if you were going to work or you had an appointment that you couldn't move, this is time you work on your business. And again, two hours as a minimum. So 
And sometimes, I'm not going to lie, when I was working many different jobs, to me, this was on the weekends. Or I learned how to get up uh, much earlier than I used to. If you're more of a night person, then maybe you're going to bed a bit later that day, and this is when you actually do the work. I know this morning, for example, it's 9.30 here in Australia on Wednesday morning. I was up at 5.30. So it's 9.30 and I've already got three hours of work done because at 6.30 I was at work, which is insane for most of you. But then again, I go to bed at 8.30, 9 o'clock at night because I'm a baby and I need to sleep early. <laughs> I'm just a grandma or baby, whatever you want to call me. I can't work at night. It's just my brain turns off after 6 or 7 o'clock. So that's what works for me. You have to find what works for you, right? And tell your friends, tell your family, tell your husband, this is non-negotiable. So uh, let me go back to the comments. Actually, I might put my face back on screen so it's a bit more personable. Um, oh, I'm sorry someone is having an issue with the comments. I can see them uh, coming through, so I'm guessing people can read them or they wouldn't be commenting. Oh, okay, I know what's happening, you guys. It's because um, some of you are watching on YouTube and some of you are watching on Facebook. And so if I'm reading a comment that you're not seeing on your platform, it's most likely because it's being commented on on Facebook if you're on YouTube or vice versa, if that makes sense. So I'm seeing the comments for both platforms, but you might only see the one from the platform you're actually viewing. Um, I could look into trying to display them on the screen, but that I don't know. I haven't really looked into that yet. Great uh, idea though. And so that's why um, Laura and Tasha, you're saying that you couldn't see all the comments, I think. Um, okay, so Kate says, I use 45 minutes work periods with 15 minutes breaks in between. Guess why? I'm a teacher in my profession and it's the time of the lesson. Yeah, that's great. Actually, I do 55 minute with five minute break too. So I understand that. That works really well for me too. And that allows you to go into that flow. Um, as well. Kate, I do best. I do work best at night between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. See, that gives me anxiety thinking about staying up that late. I can't. I, I'm the opposite. See, I, I wake up two hours after you go to bed. <laughs> no customers to disturb me. That's a great point. The reason I started working, at, like doing work earlier in the morning was that no one was expecting me to be on my emails by then. So I felt like I had free time where no one, everyone was still sleeping. So I understand that the same would happen at night. Um, Stella, best at night. Um, yeah, so find the time that works. And it doesn't have to be really early morning or night. Depend if, if your shop is your full-time job, you might be able to do that during the day or, you know, if you want to do it on a Saturday afternoon instead. But write it down. So just a little sum up here. Every week you do your review. Re remind yourself what your big projects are, which is, in this case, of this example, email marketing and a new project product line. Then write down or cross off your, your weekly spread, the stuff you can't negotiate. So if you're working, if there's stuff, commitments that you have that you know you, you can't negotiate on it at all, that's what you write uh, next. And then the next one is your nothing else matter time, time slot so that this becomes a non-negotiable as well. And this is where you're going to do your deeper work on your shop. The stuff that really is going to move the needle forward. Okay, step six, numero six. Uh, where are my notes? Okay, yes, so this is the daily focus. So you may like this or maybe you're not going to like it. I know it's made a really big difference in my the way I do my work. And it's really looking at my week and trying for each day to have one word or one focus that, okay, this, today is about this project. And so that it keeps it front of mind for me during the day. So that if something shows up during the day, I can quickly prioritize it in my brain and go, no, actually, you know what? This can wait till tomorrow because today this is what I'm about. And so you can just use, again, just write that on your planner next to the date or wherever. Um, again, here I'm using the example of the, the Maker's Roadmap Planner. Um, and so at the front here, at the top, sorry, under each uh, day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you'll see a case called important. And that's what my focus is for the day. And so, of course, if I'm working full time or part time, some days the focus is on work and it sort of frees my brain 
from feeling guilty that I'm not working on my shop too much. And maybe all I've done today is keeping track of customers' orders and conversation and emails. And I haven't done much more than that because I was at work. And so, you know, it, it, it sort of reframed a little bit your mindset around, okay, today is work day and there's nothing I can do about that. So this is what it is. But then on Tuesday, I might decide that my focus is going to be on my project new product line. And so when we'll come to the next step into actually filling out your uh, the rest of your weekly spread with your to-do list items, I'll keep that in mind. So if I've got two list items that are related to my new product line, so this one project, then I'll try to fit them in on Tuesday. Maybe I'll do the same on Saturday morning because I know I'll, I'll work a bit on Saturday morning this week to finish this project off. And so I'll keep in mind to try to put those items around that time. Why? Because email marketing, oops, sorry. Email marketing is my number one priority project. As you can see on the right, this was what we've done in the first few steps. And I know this on Thursday, I have my nothing else matters, non-negotiable time slot to work on my business. And because this is my priority project, this is what I'm going to use that for. And it doesn't mean I'm not going to work on email marketing in the afternoon, but it does mean that um, at least for those four hours, this is what I'm going to be focusing on and then more if I can. So this is what I call the daily focus. And I don't know if you guys have tried that. I find it really liberating because it, it allows me to start to look at my to-do list and go, okay, I should, you know, keep, keep it. Um, it's it's kind of like, I don't even know how to explain how it makes me feel, but it, it really gives me, well, let me go back on screen as well because I, I realized I'm just talking behind the spreadsheet. <laughs> um it really gives me that sense of priority where I know, okay, these are my big projects. I've scheduled them out during the week as a daily focus. So I know they'll get done somehow. And when I look at my to-do list, anything that doesn't really relate to that can wait. And when you do just one thing during the day, so one focus, maybe it's product photography for this Tuesday, you're so much more productive at it because your brain is in photo mode. So you'll spend more time on it. You're not going from photo to Instagram to, oh, damn it, I need to work on this product because, I'm, you know, you're really keeping it simple in your brain. And I hate, it makes us sound a little bit stupid that we need just one thing, but it really, really helps. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> okay, thank God I've got a glass of water. Mm. Um, Eva says, I really appreciate this idea of daily focus. I think it could work well for me. Give it a go. I really do um, give it a go because it works really well. I know people who need to have a lot of meeting um, that do, you know, Monday is my meeting day and then they never have meeting on Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday because that doesn't work for them. So it's really this idea of trying to organize your week with a daily focus in mind. On Fridays, I do social media and advertising project as my daily focus. Awesome. And I'm sure that's so much more efficient than if you were to try to do it 20 minutes a little bit every day. Tasha on YouTube is saying I haven't, but I think it would be it would help me out a lot instead of constantly being a squirrel. Exactly, that's the feeling. That's the feeling that you're avoiding when you do that. Is that if there's a squirrel outside the window with a sticky note on its chest that says I'm not your daily focus, then you can quickly block it out and so and 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 you know and think you're not even cute. I'm not looking at you because this is where my focus is on. So, okay, I'm glad you guys are loving this. Okay, so number seven is that's the last step. And that's what I call time blocking. I have another full video just on that that I will link to in the blog post with this video. On, so it'll be on the blog in the next day. And the idea here is that you take your to-do list and that's what this other video is about. So I'm not going to re-dive into too many details here. But it's really this idea that your to-do list should be as um, detailed as possible. So instead of having a to-do list with an item that says email marketing, I'm going to have a to-do list with a name, a project name that's email marketing and below it as many items on that to-do list as I can pro possibly think of. So, you know, log in to MailChimp, uh, edit profile information, create form, install form on website, like, you know, just all of the different steps that I know I have to take. And if you don't know the steps you have to take, try as much as possible to, to guesstimate them. And, and that's fine, you'll get better at this as, as you work more on your shop on those projects. But really trying to have those to-do lists are really broken into as many items as possible 
is super key because what you end up with is the possibility of putting a time estimate next to each of those tasks. And I think I've got a little graph here. Uh, yes, if I move here, it's kind of working. Awkward. <laughs> so here, here, um, you can see instead of having just task one, email marketing, task two, Pinterest, I'll have subtasks as, may, as much as possible. And then I try to estimate how long they will take me. And that's what I was saying at the, at the very beginning of this live show is that you get better at this. So at first you'll be a bit off mark and you'll be like, whoa, that actually took twice as long. Or, oh, that was much quicker than I thought. But then you get better at estimating how long it takes you to work on, on certain things. And the reason that's really important is because when you're super busy, you've got kids, a family, maybe another job, maybe two other jobs, five dogs to walk, whatever your situation is, if you don't have much time or longer block of time to work on your business, the overwhelm also comes from the fact that when you do have an hour in front of you, you don't know where to start. And if you sh and if you go to your weekly spread and there's an hour empty and you've just written down Pinterest, I'll do Pinterest then, it's overwhelming because you're going to spend 30 minutes of that hour trying to figure out what to do for the 30 minutes remaining. And so instead of that, if you had a very clear, okay, I need to log in, then I need to edit my biography on my bio profile on, on Pinterest, and that's going to take me maybe 15 minutes. Then I need to create two new boards. That's going to take me maybe 20 minutes. Then that's so much more, um, it's so much easier when you get to work because you sit at your desk or wherever it is that you work from and you're like, okay, I've got 35 minutes in front of me. I can do item one and two on my list. I shouldn't even consider doing subtask three in this example because it's one hour, one half time. And so it helps you really fill in and make use of those tiny gaps in between you finishing work and you having to go and meet up with a friend or whatever it is that you have on. So all of these little bits of time during the day that would usually go to waste or just make you feel so overwhelmed because you had a half hour but you didn't even get stuff done and then you start judging yourself so harshly, you could actually use them to do those those tasks. Um, so... The idea, once you've got that, and again, there is a video actually on YouTube, it's called Master Your To-Do List, I think, or How to Squeeze It, oh, I can't remember the name, but it will be on the blog, oops, sorry, it's on the blog if you want to go and watch it, where I explain everything about this, um, this to-do list concept. But once you've got that, if I go back to my slide here with my weekly spreadsheet, then it's so much easier to go, okay. Monday morning before nine, I'm not an early waker, like I'm not gonna have time to do much, but I will have half hour. Maybe that's when I go and check my customer orders and my Etsy convo and all of that stuff. New line on Tuesday is my focus. Any item on my to-do list that is new line focused is going to fit in there. Do I have time between doctor and going to the gym half hour? Maybe if they're across from one another in town, then maybe I have time to do a 15 minute task, maybe not. But really looking at all these gaps that you're going to have in your, because this is a really quite simply weekly spread that I've used for an example. Yours might be more complex than that. And if you have a two hour block of time in the middle of the day, you'll know what to fill it with by looking at your daily focus and your projects for the week. And by looking at this sublime <laughs> to-do list of yours, that's really breaking down, broken down into smaller tasks with a time estimate um, that goes with it. And so you can fill that up really quickly. And what's really nice about that is that then you go to work and or you, you wake up in the morning and you look at your weekly spread and it just feels like, ah, nice, everything is planned out. Like I know what I have to do and I know I will have time to do all this thing realistically and I won't feel bad about myself for, you know, for, for no re good reason. So I hope this helps. Let me go back to the comment section. Uh, Tasha says, I love this idea. So I don't know which one you were referring to, but I'm guessing the one about blocking those tiny little bits of time and knowing what to do with those half hour bits. Um, Pam says, I'm moving Etsy out of the stamping room, so I'm not sidetracked on creating temptation. <laughs> yes, that's very good. Um, I actually have a, also have a thing on my computer, um, called Freedom, it's an app that I lock myself out of any sort of temptation things. So like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, all of this stuff gets blocked. If, uh, for example, what I'm doing is writing uh, an outline for a video like today. 
so that I literally cannot access the internet while I'm writing this thing so that I get it done. So there's, there's things you can do to, to, to block the squirrels out for sure. Um, D says, I can see how this will save me so much time and sanity by seeing the big picture in advance. Yes, it's such a relief. It's like someone's giving you a plan and going, don't worry, here it is. You don't have to think anymore. You just have to implement. And that's, I think the thinking is what is killing us when someone gives you a plan and says, hey, that's how you implement your week. We're like, okay, cool. Step by step. I'm just going to follow the rules. Um, Tasha says, yes, time blocking. Okay, great. Uh, Laura is now on Facebook and on YouTube. Do you hear me twice? Is that how it works? Um, Katie says, what's the blocking app? It's called Freedom. Freedom app or something. It's a green little logo. There's a free version and then a paid version. And I can't remember why the paid version is better. I don't even know if I'm on the pay or the free one, but they work really well. And it blocks you on your phone too. So if you do a little sneaky, oh, I'm just going to go on Instagram on my phone for five minutes. No, it will block you there too. It will say, no, no, they link. So they they won't let you get distracted. Um, <laughs> block the squirrels out, Laura. Yes, draw that. That would be amazing. Okay, so I hope this was helpful, you guys. Again, uh, the images I've used are from the Maker's Roadmap Planner, which if you're interested in having a look at or getting yourself for the new year, you can, the link is just there, it's tizit.co slash roadmap. If not, and if you have your own system that works well already or you have a planner that you love, I'm not going to be the one saying, you should buy my planner, although I would love for you to, to do that, but make it work for you is really what I want. I want you to stop feeling so overwhelmed and stressed and feeling like you're not making progress. My last tip is if you're really busy and you have a full uh, time day job on top of running your business and your family life, give yourself a break. Like stop having expectation like you don't have a full time job and three kids. Stop looking at people who are not in the same situation as you in comparing yourself in your situation to this and looking at them going, they're making so much progress and I'm not. You are doing so much already. So be nice to yourself. It will happen. It will just happen a bit more, you know, slowly because you are too busy with other things and that's completely fine. It, it That's how it's going to work and happen for you. So be nice to yourself, especially in December. It's a crazy month for makers especially, but also just on a personal level, so much is happening. Don't stress yourself out and be nice to yourself before you can be nice to one another. Okay, Laura saying, thanks Deb, off to bed now, but lots to think about in the morning. <laughs> okay, well, good night, good night, Laura. Okay, bye-bye everyone, I'm gonna let you go. Uh, next week, again, I'll release the full, um, not just a weekly um, system that I've just talked about, but how I organize my entire year. So that same thing, you can steal ideas, steal the entire system if you want to, and you can decide what worked for you. What I'd love for you to do is if you, uh, I will go back in the comments if I missed something important, uh, I'm very sorry, I will go and read them now. If you have stuff that you wanna share with other people and, and let us know what works for you, what doesn't, please do so, because this is how I've came up with my system, is by taking bits and pieces of other people's systems here and there, so, so, so that I could make it work for me. So thank you so much for being here. This was really fun. I've missed being live with you guys. So thanks uh, to all of you that showed up. And thanks to you if you're watching the replay as well. And I will uh, chat to you soon. Bye-bye-bye.